So I'm going to talk about Ambisonic Toolkit for Reaper, which is a set of plugins for working with surround sound in Reaper. Um, I'm going to demonstrate them, but I just wanted to kind of like give a crash introduction to the idea of Ambisonic itself first, because it's often communicated as something pretty mysterious, and I wanted to try to make that as simple as possible. So when you work with surround sound, there are basically three different approaches you can take. One is that you just decide straight away how many speakers you're going to use and where they're going to stand, which is the case with, for instance, 5.1, which is a you know, very standard commercial format. And that has its advantages and challenges. So this all depends on I mean, how you work with this, all depends on what you want to do, really. The next approach is the one that is called um, spatial scene description where you have different sounds and you describe continuously where you want each of these sounds to be positioned. And this is a screenshot from a program that is currently be being developed at ZKM, which is called the Circunium, which is illustrating this, where you have different sound files and you have spatial information as trajectories uh, attached to them. The third approach is the one that I'm going to talk about, the ambisonic um, approach. And the idea here is that you have different sounds that you want to have being part of your surround sound uh, scene. And the first thing you do with this is that you encode it. And you put it into a particular sound format, which is called B format or ambisonic. And as sound files, these are just standard sound files. It's just the way that the different channels in them are combined that is also carrying information about uh, the spatial reproduction of it. Later on, you decode this for the speaker setup that you want to use it with. And one of the advantages with this approach is that when you author and create your sound scenes, you don't have to think of exactly what the playback system is going to look like. And you can use them with different um, playback systems, anything from stereo or headphones up to five speakers or working with 3D speaker setups where you also have verticality. And I'm just going to say a little bit about the Ambisonic B format uh, format itself, which is also pretty simple. Probably a lot of you have experience with working with stereo and then every now and then converting into mid-side signals. And when you have mid-side signals, you have like one of the channels is the omni signal. It's the mono part of the signal. And the second one is only communicating what's different between left and right. So it's a figure eight microphone pattern, uh, the signal there. And first order ambisonic is basically just extending on this ID. So in addition to thinking left and right, you also think front and back and up and down. And this gives you four channels. Uh, so the TVs are about to shut off, it says here, on the screens. <laughs> Good, thanks. Um, so that's first order ambisonics. The maths behind it can be extended with something that's called spherical coordinates so that you can go with higher orders and then you get, start getting these really, really weird microphone patterns. But we won't really look into that. The ambisonic tube kit is first order only. So in the Ambisonic Toolkit, there's a number of plugins, um, and I'm going to present them. I'll first talk about some of the plugins that we use for decoding. Uh, uh, we'll first talk about some of the plugins that you can use for decode for different uh, speaker setups. Afterwards, I want to talk about how you can also do spatial transforms on the encoded sound field. And finally, I'll talk a bit about different ways of bringing different audio files into being encoded ambisonically. And Ambisonic Toolkit has been available for very long for, for, for supercomputer, um, but, but in recent years, and, and that has been developed by Joseph Anderson, uh, and then in recent years I've been porting uh, most of this code so far to Reaper. So, Let's move into Reaper, which is a DLW, uh, Digital Audio Workstation program, which is really flexible in terms of how many channels you can work with. 
uh, and therefore often preferred when you work on surround sound. So here's a very simple uh, project. And um, I'll start with just using this track, which is a four track uh, pre-encoded ambisonic sound field. It's a field recording from a village in the west of Norway that I did a few years ago. And then I'm going to show the effects on the master, uh, on the master bus. Where I've now been listening uh, or enlisting different decoding plugins that I can briefly exp uh, explain. And I think that probably text here is too small for you to see, but that's okay. It's not so important to see the text, actually. I'll just show different ways of decoding and, and demo a few of them. For instance, if you want to decode to 5.1, there's one decoder for that. Um, and I'll just see if I can reduce the screen size here so we get something that is slightly bigger. Uh, displays and... You're on the Bima. Oh, thank you. That's great. So then I just quit that one. Good. So then we have no problem. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, so there's one decoder for decoding to 5.1 uh, or 5 zero really, because it's not taking the sub into uh, account here. There's a few different things you can do there, but not, not much to say about it. You have another decoder if you want to decode for like a regular speaker setup, and you can choose then whether you want to have four speakers, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. Um, we don't have that many speakers, so it's difficult to demonstrate that. So I'll rather jump to uh, the stereo decoder, for instance, and activate it. And uh, do we have sound coming out now? Thank you. Excellent. Good. Might well be the laptop that's the problem. Uh, okay. Anyway, so here we have like standard stereo decoding. Um, where you can sort of describe how far apart from each other the two speakers will be, which is like the simplest way of decoding. But there's another one, there's another way of decoding for stereo where like the DSP uh, processing is different and which tend to create like a more convincing sound scene, which is the UHJ decoding. So I'll try that. There's, there's several more decoders, but I won't really demonstrate them. I will also only mention that there's one for decoding to binaural. Um, and this one has a number of, uh, of uh, um, HUD-related transfer functions that you can use. And uh, I mean, when you have like this kind of list of different ones to choose, it's very difficult, I find, to, to, to figure out which one works for me. So for some of them, I've been able to find pictures of the, the ears that we used for measuring this. And even if this makes for an incredibly geeky uh, interface, I find this useful. Um, but for now, we'll stay, so stick with a uh, UHJ decoder. So that was the decoding part of it that can be done to different speaker setups, uh, depending on what you need. Um, but the next thing I want to look at now is different ways of transforming the sound field. So here we have it again. And then I have a number of transforms that can be done. And the first one I want to show is modifying how much di directional information there is in the sound field. So what this does is that sound coming from certain directions, um, like front and behind, becomes more spatial, spatially diffuse. And if I pull them all the way in, these sound sources will really sound like they're coming from everywhere. So it's a way of manipulating it. And I'd be like, for instance, now there's probably not much stereo information left in the recording here. While now there's much more, if, if we hear stereo here. There should be much more now. There's also another plugin for manipulating all the directions in the same way. 
and by now it's basically a mono signal that we're left with that will be omnidirectional. It will coming from all directions and start to become more spatially um, varied again. The next plugin I'll show you is one that I find really useful and interesting. Um, this is really four different transforms in one and the same plugin. Uh, and the first one, focus, I can use to focus on sound coming from a certain direction. So as I do this, the sound will tend to come from the direction that I'm illustrating. And I can kind of like move it about one or the other way. And this way also, sound that came from the other side originally will tend to be uh, reduced in volume. And there are four different ways of doing this kind of transform in this plugin. So the focus is the first one. The second one is push. But again, you can locate it. And I find this quite interesting. For instance, in a theater production, if you're doing sound design for a theater production and you want to use sound as part of creating scenography, you can start using different field recordings and then you can sort of like stage them where you want to have them uh, within the audio scenography of the piece. And of course, also in stuff like sound art or sound design for film, this could be interesting. Um, the third plugin here, is a slight variation on it. So what happens is that sound coming from certain directions stay very directional, while other sources becomes much more blurred in terms of exactly where they're coming from. And this way you can sort of push or pull uh, the sound field in a certain direction. The last uh, of these transforms is very similar to the first one. It's just a question of, of uh, where you keeping the neutral or you know, like, that, like the unchanged volumes between these two. Then there are additional transforms. Um, the dominate is again very similar in terms of letting one direction dominate. Oops, I forgot to... And I, maybe that's why we haven't heard it. I forgot to activate it, sorry. Now we can hear it. So, so again with this one, you can give preference to sound coming from one direction. Another kind of transform you can do is that you can mirror the whole sound field so that everything's mirrored uh, coming from a different direction. And I think this will be easiest to hear if I first push it all in a certain direction so that it's very locally based. There we go. And if I now start mirroring it, I can move the direction of the mirror. I can also move it in a vertical. And in this way, I can kind of like, you know, reshape uh, the spatial layout of the sound field. The next plugin is doing the same, but it's mirroring everything around the middle of the space, uh, around Origo, or, you know, like the sweet spot. And then there's two more plugins here, one for, um, one that will kind of like you know, compensate for or introduce a proximity uh, effect, making the sound sound as if it's coming from closer to you. This, this is a really subtle effect, but it tends to you know, give an illusion of sounds coming from closer than it used to do. And at the same time, if there's something that was recorded very close, you can kind of compensate for that. And the last effect um, is a gun manipulating uh, the spatial direction of the sound field. So you can rotate it, you can tilt it, and you can tumble. So that you can really alter the spatial layout of the sound field uh, with all of these effects. Uh, which is quite interesting in terms of shaping the space and making uh, space a compositional quality to work with. <coughs> so that's, uh, that's a very really 
quick run through some of these effects. And the final thing I'll do then is to look at how you might um, make, take sound and make it into B format. And I'll start with the mono sound source. It's a piano recording, which was really loud. There we go. So there's a number of different ways you can do this. The first one, um, plain wave, um, is making it as if this sound is coming from infinitely far away in a certain direction. The next one is instead putting it, making it completely omnidirectional. There's no GUI for this one. It's making it coming from anywhere. Which means, you know, that once you have that, you can start pulling it in a certain direction using transforms on it. The third one is interesting. Uh, the third one I'm going to show here, the spreader. What this does is that it's, it's positioning different play, uh, the different frequency bands of it in different locations. So it's kind of like spreading it in this space. And you can control how spread out it's going to be. So you can make it really spread out. So the different frequencies come from different directions and sometimes maybe you don't want, for instance, a piano to be scattered all over the place. But if you afterwards start applying a transform to it, mean that you can locate it in a certain direction, but it starts having a certain body. Um, and the diffuser is a similar approach, also spreading it, diffusing the sound coming from different directions. So there's some really interesting ways of encoding mono signals um, uh, that are, you know, well worth playing with. If we move to stereo, um, there's also a few options here. We have one, again, which is a very straightforward one, which is dealing with it as if like one of the channels came from infinitely far away in that direction and the other one in that direction. That's the plane wave. And you can decide exactly where those directions are um, by narrowing it down or making it wider. And of course, this will be easier to sound when you're moving beyond uh, stereo. And as you can see, there's no possibility of kind of like you know, driving this to the left or the right here. But if you start combining it afterwards with uh, rotations, for instance, you can start doing that. So these plugins are really made to be used, several of them together. There's also another stereo um, encoder, which again is the super stereo, which will again look into the spectral content of, this, uh, of the stereo field and distribute it based on that. And I find that this often makes for what sounds as a more convincing sound scene. Um, and there are other options too. If you have stuff that has been recorded in UHJ, which is they're like this stereo version of Ambisonic, then you can re-encode it back and retrieve a, at least quite a bit of the spatial information. So for instance, if you have um, some of the recordings that have been done on the Nimbus record label, which is a classical music label from, from, from England, most of their recordings are done this way and you can actually sort of like upcode them into a surround playback again afterwards. 
Uh, I don't think I'll demonstrate that here. And then just as one last example of a decoder, of, of an encoder for multi-channel, we have an encoder for 5.0 signals, so that if you have a 5.0 five or 5.1 sound source, uh, you can encode this into an ambisonic sound field. Um, and the very last thing that I'll show here is if you have a sound field and then you want to do some effect processing on it, then you often don't want to do that on the four different channels just as they are because you might modify the spatial information quite radically in the process without knowing exactly what you do. Um, so then one approach to do that is to first turn the B format single into A format single do some sound effect processing. So here I'm doing one stereo effect, the first and second track, or first and second channel, and then on the third and fourth channel, and then you re-encode it back again, which gives some also possibilities for sound shaping of these sound fields. So basically, the Ambisonic Toolkit is a set of plugin for spatial sound design composition, and uh, which offers quite a few interesting possibilities for composing with the spatial quality of the sound. Um, and if you want to take a look and download it, it's on the ambisonictoolkit.net website, uh, both the SuperCollider version of it and the Reaper version, which is the one I presented here. And I'll be around for the rest of the Music Tech Fest, so if you want to check this out further, you know, please contact me. Thank you.